I just wanted to make this quick video as we're getting a few questions about the process and why it works, kind of how we do it. So I'm just going to quickly go through why we do it in the way we do it and why it works so well because of that. Okay, so a bit of history. Back in the day with Amazon FBA businesses, you could get a product from Alibaba, whack it onto Amazon, be the first one there to offer a good solution to a specific problem with a physical product and rank really fast. It's all about organic rankings with Amazon. That's where the passive sort of income of the business model comes. If you keep having to spend, you know, 30, 40% ACOS for PPC, or you keep having to do outreach, or you generally just don't make enough sales through organic rankings, you don't really have a passive, semi-passive business model. And that's the eventual goal for everyone we work with. We, you guys have a great product. We can market that product, but our sole goal is to increase organic rankings inside Amazon. As a result, that will increase revenue that is pretty much 100% passive, okay? So the process is three kind of broad stages. The first one is pre-launch. So this is everything that kind of happens before a product can even be inside of Amazon, or more importantly, before we go and make our first sale. This is things like keyword research is incredibly important, not just targeting the obvious keywords. So say, for example, we have um, a laptop that we're promoting. We don't just want to target a laptop, computer, anything like that. We want to see what the target market is actually searching for in reverse and reverse engineer how we could show them our product. Also, secondary keywords is something people miss out on a lot. So longer versions that mean the same thing. Google used to be extremely smart with this. It's called LSI keywords, latent semantic indexing. And Amazon, although it's not as evolved as Google, it's kind of like an earlier model. So coming from an SEO background, Google in 2008, 2009 looks like Amazon is today, especially with their on-page ranking factors. So things like title tags, bullet points, description, um, even things like search terms in the back end, all of those look the same as what that would be the same as on a website back when Google was in their kind of, you know, pre Panda and Penguin updates, algorithm updates back in 2008, 2009. Okay. So pre-launch is just doing everything to a listing that we can control. So things like copywriting, things like keyword research, things like on-page optimization of the listing to get it initial boost, right? Once we get that, we don't really need to touch the listing again whether it makes 100 sales a day or a million sales, it doesn't really matter because the listing itself is perfectly optimized. We want to get to that first, and that's the first kind of step that we end up taking. The second stage is the initial launch or the pre-launch. So, uh, not the pre-launch, sorry, the soft launch. So this is something that is relatively new, I think, in the industry, but it's kind of just testing the market so if we go out and generate five sales <clears throat> and those people review the product, what are they going to say? Is it going to be a positive review? We can't ask for positive reviews. It's against Amazon's terms of service, but we can ask for reviews. So most of the time, if our product is good, it's going to be a positive review. And we have five great, really, you know, core, honest reviews. And we can kind of get an idea of the market then if it's good, if it's not good and start to see if we make any organic sales at all. Because of pre-launch in stage one, we'll be ranking for some low volume keywords, so they're not gonna get a lot of actual search traffic, but you will be ranking on page one or two inside of Amazon of those. Once you start getting your little bit of initial sales, kind of proof of concept and reviews as well, which will obviously help conversions because nobody really buys a product without checking their reviews. I think 90% of people don't read, 93% of people don't read Amazon product listings. So they only read the, or they make their buy decision on the reviews, the images, and the, what was it? And the price. So if you can control those three things, which you can, not the reviews, obviously, but if you have a good product that controls the reviews themselves, then you can pretty much convert 93% of people because they won't read the bullet points or description.
especially if you have a relatively low priced product as well. If it's above $100, $200, then it might be a bit more. You know, you'll have to work with some more on copyright inside the bullet points themselves. But if not, people will make their decision based on images, price and reviews. So the soft launch is getting five initial sales and reviews to kind of kickstart the business. If you already have, say, 100, 200 reviews, we still go through this process because we have to find out if the product is kind of good enough for our marketing techniques in stage three. So stage three is all about spiking bestseller rank. So as I mentioned before, increasing organic sales or increasing organic rankings is directly proportional to total revenue. OK, if you rank first for your primary keywords, that's going to be a huge increase in total sales as opposed to, you know, doing a marketing campaign outside of Amazon. So the sole goal is to increase organic rankings. How we do that? is we have to spike bestseller rank. Now, bestseller rank is, again, kind of like Google back in the day. They used page rank to measure how high quality a website was and would result it in um, or would reward them with higher organic rankings if they had a high page rank or if they had links from high page rank websites. Amazon's bestseller rank is kind of the same thing, but links inside Amazon are just sales. So it all boils down, you can make it as complicated as you want, but it all boils down to how many sales you make and how much money you make for Amazon. It was always going to come down to that. So the more sales you make, the more you pay in fees to Amazon, the higher they will rank you in the organic search results. OK, so now the equation becomes really, really simple. We have to make a ton of sales from external sources because we don't yet rank inside Amazon's organic search so we have to make a ton of sales from external sources for a little period of time now this is where people used to go wrong or this is where amazon's involved recently now you used to be able to offer discount codes of 100 percent, send them to 100 people spike bestseller rank for three days and rank first for your keywords and then it would be happy days you'd start making organic sales which would keep you ranked anyway and it would be Honestly, an incredibly easy business model to scale to seven, maybe even eight figures a year. Nowadays, Amazon knows that this happens and they're cracking down on it, even down to sort of 20% discounts. So anything over 20%, they don't count as a full sale anymore. And hence, you lose all the benefit of doing it in the first place. So instead, what we did was we built a few systems out and took a look at things like what happens when we have a huge budget for Facebook ads but in a really, really short period of time? So if we can spend $1,000, $2,000 on Facebook ads inside a week, we're going to get a few sales, right? And if we mix that with influencer marketing, and then if we mix that again with other outreach content building sources, suddenly we can get a lot of sales in a really short period of time. And these are all full price sales as well. The key, though, is timing everything together. So if we did Facebook ads and we spread it out over a month and we did influencer marketing, we spread it out over a month and we did some content marketing, spread that out over, say, two months, we're not going to be ranking in Amazon very well. Like we'll increase slowly. Our bestseller rank will increase, which is tied to organic rankings. So that will increase slowly. But at the end of the day, it's not going to spike bestseller rank for a long enough period of time. That's going to make us rank really fast for organic results. And if it takes ages to rank, then the ROI, the return on investment, it's going to be quite low because we're going to have to wait for two months to get our cash flow back from Facebook ads or influencer marketing and reinvest that again. And that's where the problem lies. That's why there's lots, lots of businesses in, on, on Amazon doing between one and 20K a month and just can't scale it up to the next level, even though the people at the top are doing 50, 100K a month in revenue. This is kind of like the most common client we have coming to us. So... What we built was a little system, three elements, and it's all about timing. So you can have a look in the process page. What we do is we reach out to influencers in our target market and cross verticals. So instead of, say, for example, you have a food product, maybe instead of reaching out to food and lifestyle bloggers who are going to charge us, you know, 500, 1,000 pounds a pot just to review our product. It's not going to be a good positive ROI. 
Instead, we're going to go cross verticals to people who maybe are influencers in regards to, say, like pets or health and fitness is always a good one. We send them the product. All that happens is they review it because they don't usually get this type of inquiry. It's usually either free in terms of market research or we pay them a small fee to review the product, maybe $100, something like that. You get 10 of these in the same week. What happens is their target audience will go and try your product, especially if you kind of position yourselves in a way that we're a brand new business, you know, more of the sort of authentic way of branding rather than we're great, just more authentic kind of this style. The These sort of 10 influencers will send over maybe a couple of thousand visitors each. Maybe 1% of those will end up picking up your product and that will hugely spike bestseller rank. We take that a step further. We create a Facebook ads campaign in the same time. So in that time, we will spend whatever you have for, say, a three month Facebook ads budget. We will spend in two weeks. OK, might sound a bit scary, but trust me on this one. That will spike bestseller rank through Facebook itself. Now, conversions inside Facebook are a bit difficult because obviously we're sending them to an Amazon product page. So if your product is a little bit generic, they might end up going to competitors or going to Amazon search. But don't worry, this is not we're not looking for a positive ROI from this campaign itself. We're looking to spike bestseller rank. So Facebook ads will give us another five, 10 sales a day. Influence marketing, five, 10 sales a day, usually, depending on who we get. And then finally, a content marketing outreach, which gets us usually about three, five sales a day as well. We'll push that all into a really, really tight timeline. So every sale comes in, spikes bestseller rank, and as a result, increases organic rankings, but keeps it there for a week. The problem most people used to have is they would use like a viral launch service or something, which is fine, but it would hit a thousand sales on day one and then nothing. And Amazon now knows that that's just a viral launch. Even if it's an email list that you actually own, it still tails off far too quickly. So you want to create the approach that you are marketing outside of Amazon, bringing people that weren't going to buy on Amazon to Amazon and essentially giving them money. The key here is the more money you make for Amazon, the higher you're going to rank and the more money you will make for yourself. Okay. I hope that wasn't too confusing or anything. Um, have a look at the process page below. If you're interested in anything, give me a message on tom at ghostmarketing.co.uk and I'll get back to you. Thanks.